Hey, what's up guys? Alex Accept New Tech. How are you doing? So there seems to be quite a lot of interest going around for this phone right here, the T-Mobile Revel. We unboxed it on the channel uh, a couple weeks ago, and then we're also reviewing it very soon. Uh, I've been using it for a couple of weeks now, and it's actually not too bad of a phone. Uh, it's not the best thing in the world, for sure, in, in terms of this price point, but uh, it's not too bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to try out a few games so you guys get a feel of how this phone works. So this is a gaming test for the T-Mobile Rebel. First thing we're going to play is a game that I play a lot. It's called Fire Emblem Heroes. We're going to turn down the audio a little bit. This is just so you guys get a feel for what games you can play and can't play on this thing. So let me run... Sorry, all these daily logins are great. If you've played this game, let me know in the comments below. I'm actually a big fan of this game here. Let us um, just go with something really simple. I normally wouldn't do that level with the cast I have here, but I just want to auto battle so you guys can kind of see how it works. Um, this particular game seems to work pretty well. I haven't had... Mm, I haven't had any problems as you can see all the animations things like that uh, but this game seems to run on basically any device period it's very very uh, user friendly and also processor friendly it doesn't really require much processing power or graphical power uh, so it's very simple to use animations are great no lag nothing uh, it seems to work very well let me just uh, let this battle finish and then we'll move on to the next game. So if you're playing something like this where it's sprite animated, it should be fine. You shouldn't have too much of a problem here. So as you can see, went through without a hitch. Alright, now let us try Burnout. So I used to love Burnout on the PS2 and they have a new app out. So I'm really excited to test this out. Well, actually, I played it a couple times on here and it's pretty interesting to, to, to use in terms of smartphone controls. Um, this game does take a little bit longer to load up. So you are going to notice, notice some slowdowns um, in load speeds and performance for more graphical power, graphically powered games. Um, it still ran it okay, as you're going to see soon after this loads up. It just takes a while to load. Uh, but that's to be expected with the processing power we have here. Let us, are we almost done loading? Where's the loading bar? Almost done loading. So we're, we're just going to let this run. Normally I would cut straight to the actual footage, but, you know, this is a gaming test so I do want you guys to see how long it takes to boot up a game or how long it takes to go from one app to another uh, let's do a can we do free drive there we go all right and another loading screen so if you're okay with loading screen time this will be okay for you if this really annoys you then don't try to game on this because uh, it's going to take a while. Alright, here we go. Let us... There are some drop frames playing this. It is playable though, for the most part. Controls are a little bit laggy. But that is to be expected. It is playable though, as you can see here. Whoops. Yeah, you, you can kind of feel it is a little sluggish for the most part, but uh, it is playable. It is playable. Not the highest performance of this game I've used, um, I've played on at least. But this is a $120 phone, so the fact that I can play it as well as it does right now is already a huge accomplishment compared to a few years back, you know. All right, let's move on to the next game. As you can see, it takes a while to close out of that and switch back to a different app. We're going to go to Riptide, which uh, is a standard bearer 
lot of people use this game to test apps, test performance, graphical performance. Riptide GP2. Let's just do a quick little game here. I, I really don't play this game too much um, for fun other than testing. Um, when I do play it, I, I don't play it on Android phones. I play it on Android TV. So I like having like my Shield controller and I play it with my Shield TV. But I just don't like turning it like this. I'd rather use a joystick uh, for this control to play this game. But as you can see, it's actually running relatively smoothly. It's actually pretty smooth. Um, I was playing this a little bit and I didn't notice any dropped frames, no slowdowns. For this particular game, it actually looks really good. And for, once again, a $120 phone, the performance is actually pretty good here. Um, but for comparison, last year on the R1 HD, I did play this game on that too. And it, it worked pretty well, but I did notice maybe a couple frame drops here and there. Uh, but I, I was still pretty impressed that the R1 HD could handle this that well. And this game basically works pretty well on a lot of devices now. So uh, it works really well on this. As you can see, it just plays pretty smoothly. Next game we're going to do is something a little more simple. We're going to go with this call, game called Beast Mode. It's, I guess it's a football game. It's kind of like a, a football endless runner. Uh, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. It's one of those blocky games. It's actually called Blocky Beast Mode Football. And even a game like this takes a little bit of time to load up. On the HTC U11, of course, this loads up extremely quickly because it is a flagship phone. But that's not the point. The point is that this works even though it is a super budget phone that T-Mobile sells. And here we go. Let us... It's so hard to talk and concentrate. <laughs> and I'm pretty bad at games, guys, by the way. That's why I played all those auto-run games. I love auto battles in RPGs. They're just so helpful when you want to grow a portfolio of characters and stuff, but you just don't have the time due to work or, or whatever. It's always fun to have auto battle. So uh, this is just like a guilty pleasure game where you just play when you're on the toilet or waiting for something to happen. You can play this game. I'm sure a lot of you guys out there do that. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, the game ran pretty smoothly, no hiccups. Uh, for a game of this quality, of this animation style, it seems to work pretty fine. We're going to go with Spider-Man 2. So this game is kind of, it's not really an open world sandbox game, but it is pretty fun. It is an action adventure game featuring our favorite neighborhood Spider-Man, our web slinger. This is a pretty old game now, but it is pretty graphically intensive. And there is a lot of action going on. If there is a game where there, there's, there could be frame dropping, this probably could be it so let's try this out once again I did play this a little earlier and uh, the results were pretty good I was pretty impressed with it the low times do take long but that is to be expected and also I wanted to note that the phone heats up a little bit right here when you're playing games for more than five minutes it does heat up right here underneath the fingerprint scanner so uh, that's something to be aware of. A lot of phones do that. A lot of the more expensive phones are getting better at preventing that from happening. But the budget phones are more susceptible to that. So uh, be aware of that. And there's not much wrong. You're just pushing your processor a little bit more than it would like to be pushed. So you can see the game is starting. I already played through this. I already beat this game, actually. But uh, I just downloaded this for you guys to see. So let's try it out. All right, defeat the thugs. Tap to jump. And then here we go. Let's see if it lags. All right, seems to be working pretty well so far. Very nice, very nice. 
Super combo, finish him. All right, and now let's do some web swinging. Let's see um, how this web swinging feels. Obviously, once again, I don't really like playing this game too much um, on handhelds. I actually really like playing this game on like an Android TV with a shield controller, which I have done. I, I silo this game onto my shield console and I, I played this. It reminds me of Spider-Man 2 for the PS2. That was one of my favorite uh, PS2 titles. And this one's pretty fun. So it seems to be working well. The swinging mechanic seems okay. Uh, even when you're fighting and there's a lot of stuff going on on the screen, it seems to load everything relatively quickly. So you might be able to play Grand Theft... Oh, I should have put Grand Theft Auto in here. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 3. But this does seem to work pretty well. Oh, no, actually I have Vice City. Yeah, maybe I should have done Vice City. But still, this, this game is a pretty big city. A lot of stuff going on. And it seems to work really well. So... Once again, I'm Alex with Sepnotech. I was just checking out a few games. Uh, in conclusion, you can basically play every single game that you can think of. Graphically intensive or very simple to play. Uh, it's just some games will vary in terms of load time. And so that is what you're sacrificing when you're paying for a phone of this price. You're paying for load times. Um, so yeah, I'm actually pretty impressed with it. You can get what you want done for the most part. Once again, my name is Alex from Simpnotech. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you guys expect from the Rebel. I'm really excited to uh, have that review out coming in the next couple weeks. And I will see you in the next video. Peace. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, hit the bell button below so that you don't miss a single video in the future. I'll see you guys next time.